How's it going guys, Theo Joe here, and today I'm gonna go over what Microsoft announced as a big update for Windows 10. They're calling it the Windows 10 Creators Update, and they had a keynote a few days ago where they went through most of the big features, and the way they put it is there's too much innovation to walk through during that keynote. It's like, all right, Microsoft, whatever. But they did talk about three main things that is going to be added in that new creators update. The three main topics they focused on in the keynote were mixed reality, so holograms with HoloLens and even a little bit of virtual reality, and 3D creations. They also talked about gaming, so 4K gaming, streaming gaming, that sort of thing. And finally, sharing, so sharing between contacts, making it easier to contact your friends. So I'm gonna go over each of those. So for mixed reality, the first thing they talked about are some new tools they were creating that allows everyone basically to easily make 3D art, 3D scenes, and that sort of thing. They said they wanted to bring 3D to everyone. And while I was watching this, I was like, I don't really get it. It basically just looks like a Microsoft Paint for 3D. And sure enough, they announced it is now called Paint 3D. Because you know, Microsoft Paint has such a great reputation. And they spent a lot of time showing these people making these really rudimentary 3D scenes. I didn't really get it. At one point they said it was revolutionary. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. Now to be fair, I think what they're really going for is a starting point for people who are kind of interested in doing 3D art or just art in general, this kind of gives them an easy way to get into it without having to learn any complicated tools or anything like that. And then maybe in hopes of they'll be able to get interested in it and start using more advanced tools as they move on. So that kind of makes sense, that's pretty cool, but it's not exactly revolutionary. But I will say one of the really cool features they showed is the ability to 3D scan objects with a phone. They had this Windows phone, and I assume this will work with other phones as well, but they had this phone and they walked around this sandcastle and used the camera and it basically captured that sandcastle and created a 3D object using the images it captured. And I could totally see that being really useful, especially in the future when they create new versions of it that work even better. Even a professional maybe wants to scan an object to remember what it looks like later. They might not necessarily use that rudimentary scan, but they could use it as sort of a template to create a more realistic thing themselves. So that could be really cool. They also announced they're gonna have a website where you can upload and share these creations you make. But the interesting thing is that you'll be able to download these creations and 3D print them if you have a 3D printer, which I thought was actually pretty awesome. Then they also show that a lot of these 3D features are gonna be integrated with HoloLens as well. So you can download these objects, put them in your room with HoloLens or anything like that. But also an example they showed is if you are going shopping or something, maybe for furniture, you can download the 3D object of a chair and use HoloLens to project it into your room and see what that chair would look like to scale in your room. So I think that'll be really cool, very useful, if you wanna see what an object looks like in real life before you actually buy it. And finally, the big thing they announced for mixed reality is they're actually creating virtual reality headsets. So now we got Oculus, Vive, HoloLens, and now Microsoft is working with other manufacturers to create some themselves. Some of the specific manufacturers they mentioned were Lenovo, Asus, and HP, and they didn't really mention any specific specifications, but they did say that the price would be starting at around $299 for some of these headsets, which is a great deal compared to a lot of the virtual reality headsets you see. And they also have inside out tracking, which is another big deal because it means it will work in any room without having to set up any base stations or sensors anywhere. And depending on how well these actually work, this is definitely really exciting. They showed a demo of the guy wearing one of these and they had a virtual room that I guess he decorated and you could select apps and that sort of thing, and they also had him do a virtual tour, so it's really cool. The next main topic they focused on was gaming, and one of the things they talked about was the new Beam service they purchased. It's a streaming platform, kind of like Twitch for gaming, except it has some interesting features that allow interactions with the users. So it actually has these buttons that the viewer can press to either suggest what the viewer does in real time, or possibly even control the game themselves. So it's really focused on possibly 
getting the viewer really part of the game that the streamer is playing. So that's pretty cool. I'm not really sure how popular this Beam service is. Definitely nowhere close to Twitch. And I think it did get a boost in popularity since Microsoft announced that they bought it. So we'll just have to see. Another feature they mentioned, which I think they have actually talked about before, is the Play Anywhere feature between Windows 10 and Xbox One, where if you buy a game for Xbox One or Windows 10, it works between them. So because Xbox One is basically running Windows 10, you can play games on both and it will actually sync your progress and everything will work on both. So you don't have to buy the game twice if you wanna play on PC. Although I think if you're playing on a computer, you still probably have to use an Xbox controller. I don't think you can use a mouse and keyboard, but I could be wrong about that. And they also mentioned that because Xbox One S runs a version of Windows, it's gonna be updated too. And they're gonna be adding Dolby Atmos support. So that's Dolby Audio, which is, I guess, very good quality. So if you're watching movies or Blu-ray specifically, you'll be able to have a lot better audio if you're using like a surround sound system. In the final segment, they talked about sharing and community and that sort of thing, which none of these really got me that excited, but I'll still talk about them. For example, they introduced one feature with Skype where now your favorite contacts can show up in your taskbar. And if you want to send a file to someone through Skype, you basically just drag that file, whatever it is, whatever type of file, onto the contacts picture in the taskbar and it will automatically send that file to the person. So it makes it a lot easier to send files, although I don't really use Skype that often. I don't really know that many people who do. So I guess it's useful if you use it, but probably not for many people. They also showed how some Windows apps are gonna be having sharing filters built in, like the Photos app will have a share feature where you click on it and then you can draw on it and that sort of thing if it's a picture and then automatically send that to your contacts. Again, I think that mostly just works through Skype, but it might for others in the future. But finally, one of the more useful things they talked about with sharing is in some cases, you'll be able to actually choose which app you wanna share with. So if you use several of them like Skype or maybe Xbox Live or something, you can actually choose which app you wanna to use to contact that specific person. So if you just wanna send a message to Xbox, you can do that. So I think that'll be useful, especially for people who don't just use Skype. And that's about it. There was a lot more that they talked about, little stuff, but I think everything I covered was what I thought was the most significant. I think it's actually kind of cool that Microsoft is doing this creators update to get people into creating things. It's pretty neat and hopefully they'll introduce maybe more professional features for people like me who are a little bit more advanced than Microsoft Paint. Although I really hope this update goes more smoothly than the anniversary update. As you may know, that kind of broke a lot of stuff like the webcams, it kind of broke a lot of webcams. So hopefully they do a lot of beta testing with this one and nothing gets screwed up. But as always, I would like to hear what you guys think. If I missed anything big time, you can let me know down in the comment section or if you have any thoughts, if you think this is stupid, if you still don't want to use Windows 10 at all, let us know. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up so I know you enjoyed it. And also subscribe because I try to make new videos at least three times a week, usually more, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And if you wanna keep watching, I've got some other videos over here. You can click on these, even if you're on a phone, it's a new type of annotation. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you either here on YouTube or on Twitter as well. So I'll see you next time and have a good one.